Always keep fire extinguishers on hand. It just seems to smear it, so I just make it worse, which is very annoying. So I'll step back a second so I can see access to the shower. After eight years of the nomadic life involving crossing oceans in a 34 foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42 foot catamaran from the ground up. So this is a story that you should always keep fire extinguishers on hand and not only that, but know where all of them are located within your home or your boat. We had an exciting day here at the marina last weekend. There's this mechanic, Colby, and he'll come in and service a lot of the boats. He actually services the engines for the Viking that we're currently living on at the moment, just for another month or so. Um, but he had his work truck here last weekend and it was parked all the way in the back of the yard, like surrounded by different boats. And I guess there was a mechanical issue or some battery failure, but an electrical fire started. So I was on my way from the tent over to the Viking to have lunch and I saw this group of people standing around in a corner and kind of walk over to see what's going on. And there's this cloud of smoke billowing up and his truck was on fire. So thankfully due to the quick thinking of Tucker, our yard manager, who was kind of like here and in charge at the moment, um, goes to grab another work truck, chains him up and then drags him out to an open space because if anybody has seen boats catch fire, those things go up like that. So it was the last thing we wanted. Thankfully, the truck itself was diesel, so we didn't need to worry about that exploding. But once it was safely pulled out, anybody who was in the vicinity was running around grabbing fire extinguishers so that we could try and get this massive growing fire put out as soon as possible. And as I know, we did find out once we called the fire department, it took them 22 minutes to get here. Uh, so thankfully, everybody was acting quickly. So I was running to the tent to grab our fire extinguishers because of course we have some on there in case anything happens to our boat while we're working. And I knew we had at least two of them in there because we freshly got them in a few months ago to replace older ones. And I could only find one of them. So I ran that out to the guys as I'm putting it out, run back to the tent. I'm searching everywhere for that second fire extinguisher and I could not find it, which left me completely freaked out because if that were our boat that went up in flames and I only had one fire extinguisher, it would not have been enough. So keep in mind where your fire extinguishers are. It could save you. Of course, these emergencies are never planned, but thankfully due to everybody here, there is a couple of charter boat captains, uh, Francis and Andrew Hemsley, Matt and Tucker. We were also able to run around to like all of the emergency fire extinguishers that they keep around the marina for emergencies. And we were able to get it under control by the time the fire department got here. So thankfully nobody was injured. Colby is now shopping for a new truck, but that was kind of a scary situation. So yep, we're restocking the marina with fire extinguishers. Gonna get a couple of extra to go in the tent and I am definitely, definitely gonna make sure I know exactly where they are kept at all times. And now time for some Outlander. What do you mean season five isn't out yet? But it's, only April. No! Netflix knows where you live. And because your IP address is public, so does every website you visit. And that is why a VPN or virtual private network is so important. NordVPN encrypts all of the data sent between your computer and the internet so that no one can steal your personal information, which is great if you're using public Wi-Fi, like we used to do once upon a time when we were still traveling. And unfortunately, public Wi-Fi is a goldmine for hackers. Not only that, but you can stream geo-blocked content by changing your location across the globe. So even though I have been patiently waiting for season five of Outlander to come to Netflix in the US, honestly, I just can't wait anymore. But by simply changing my location to the UK, I now have full access. With NordVPN, you can connect up to six devices on your account and browse the internet securely while protecting your personal data. Nord is offering an exclusive deal of only $3.16 a month for their two-year plan, 
plus the first month is free. And this all comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk of trying. If you're interested, make sure to check out the link in our description box below. That's where it would be if there was a if it was to be flat mm -hmm. all the way across. Step back a second so I can see access to the shower. Um, and that's hitting the wall. Already. Oh yeah, you're right. Yep. All right. So well, it can go back as the like how it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it hit the wall. So we have. So then you have this tied up. Pass between the toilet and the shower. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Which I don't know, to me it still seems more intrusive there than it was in like the corner here, and just kind of like walking right past it, and then although we would have cabinets coming out there. But. Well, our option is to pull the cabinets back. So. in place now as you can see Jess has gone through and fared a bunch of this out. Um, reason why we attacked that right now is it's going to be very hard to get to once we build in this this cabinetry the rest of the stuff around here and it makes it so much easier to be able to lean in there and get the sander in place and all that kind of stuff. My new project now is to get this board in. So this is kind of the, the backing area for this, where the toilet's going to be and where the cabinetry is going to be. There's going to be sliding doors right in this area. So we've got to make sure that that's aligned. And then there's an upper piece that goes there as well. Um, I'm still debating on how we're going to do the sides. We think we're going to trim it out a little bit different. But uh, as it stands right now, we just got to make sure we get those things all aligned properly. Um, make sure where the front of this cabinet goes, where this little bulkhead, this little piece comes into place. Um, so those things are all set up and it's not crooked from anything else from the center line. So I'll show you how we're doing that right now. So the first step of this project was to reestablish our center line. Um, it's kind of easy to see over on this side. It's just in the middle of where these webs are, and we can still get access to that. That's where the, the shower pan is. Uh, there was one over on that wall, but uh, as you can see, it's covered now in fairing compound. Someone forgot to mark that through, <laughs> so we're putting that back on. And then stern, right on that rear bulkhead, the area that's cut out right now, and on the furthest most bulkhead, I do have marks on there from previously. So get that all lined up. Put our new center line down here. And what that's allowing me to do now is I can measure off of this and see exactly where everything is. So if we look at where like this cabinet is, uh, come on, take measure. So we can see that it is hitting at 344 roughly here you can see it is 344 so now we know that this cabinetry or this front face of the cabinet is perfectly square to center line it's, it's running parallel so we got that established and as soon as I don't have the camera in my hand because it was kind of hard to do with one hand what I'll do is I'll do that same thing. So once we get this piece and that upper piece into place, make sure that they're parallel plumb, then what I can do is I can figure out exactly where this bulkhead's gonna be, uh, get that set up so it is square, and the same thing with this, the front end of this cabinet. That's gonna be the tricky one. So what we're doing with this cabinet setup is this bulkhead here is gonna be hidden behind the front of the cabinetry. So this bulkhead is going to be exposed, and this bulkhead, the front edge of it, is going to be exposed as well. And then in between that, overlaying over the top of this is going to be two opening doors. So you're not going to see that this lower part of the bulkhead is here at all. It's just going to look like the front face of the cabinet then. The back end, this will be then covered or, or uh, fared and everything. This will be white, painted. Uh, I put a bit of work on fairing that and finishing that off. 
Same thing with this, and there'll be a cabinet door here as well. So, as you can see, it's, it's important to make sure that everything is lined up properly. It's gonna make my life a lot easier when I start making the cabinet doors and all that kind of stuff as well. But, uh, so that's gonna be the next step we go through is getting that all set up, getting it temporarily put in place and uh, bonded in there, then it can glass it and go through and do the normal steps. So, lots more to do, lots of prep work to do, and I'm probably not gonna be able to start glassing until at least another day or two if there's enough stuff that I need to lay out first. noisy here now there's some sanding going on but um, I did put a mark this is exactly 600 millimeters off of the center line for this location and over on this side this location so now what we'll do is take the laser again align those two points and you can see what it does it gives me straight all the way up here all the way across the front then and down and down on the hall. So then all I need to do is just mark that area out real simple, real easy, put all the boards <laughs> in that location. So not real complex, but uh, a beautiful thing about a laser is it does give me that accurate reference point to everything. So go through and play with this, prop the surfaces, and get ready to bond the stuff in place. Okay, the area is finally all prepped. It's all laid out. Um, everything is square and plumb. Uh, should hold into place while I do the, the coves in here and get all that stuff locked in. And then once it starts to get uh, tack off, once it starts to get a little bit firm, then I can go through and glass. Because of trying to get into like this area on the inside here and some of the other stuff, I think I'm going to do it in two steps. So I'm going to do one side glass around here and then come back uh, later on tonight and then glass the inside once it's a little bit firmer here. Because I can just envision myself, I'm gonna be bending over or leaning over this and I will knock something and knock it out of alignment and then drive myself absolutely insane. So better to take my time and make sure this is all right. So that's gonna be the project for today is going through and glassing this stuff in and uh, probably on to the night too. As far as things are going for me in the fairing world, I am starting to get a lot of things done focusing on the master head. Um, since Matt has been in here kind of building things out more, as soon as he kind of finishes a project that has shelves, like I dive right in to try and get the first layer of fairing compound on just to get rid of this green because, oh, it's gonna be so nice once we get like actual finishes on here. Cabinets for the vanity are mostly finished. Um, I've kind of gone through and done a lot of the coves, but in some of the areas, the corners, I have to go back and uh, touch up. You can see that one isn't done yet because I'm still kind of getting the hang of it. And for me, like where the three sides come together, I can't always like get that really well in one side. So I'll let it uh, dry and then go back and when I'm not disturbing the other parts of the compound, kind of going with another layer on top there. And now that we've got the kind of bulkheads for our cabinet, which is going to have the sink on it, I've just done that first light layer of fairing. Um, kind of started to lightly go back here, but I think this might just be like a flow coat further back there. Still haven't done any of the coves yet. And then in the long cabinet that follows on the outside part of the hull, this, I think we're gonna get a veneer on the top, so I don't have to worry about doing that. But there'll be opening doors here leading back, and of course, this is an area I am not looking forward to. I know there's gotta be like a good way to kind of cove or transition, but because I'm still practicing, that part doesn't have to get done right away. I'm gonna wait until I feel a bit better about these things and go back and attack that. And also one of the reasons that I'm paying so much attention to these cabinet areas, or at least initially like the ones behind me, is they don't need to be perfect. I know that I don't have to have like a glossy, super smooth finish on them, but because areas behind me like the shower 
do need to have that. I didn't want to go into that kind of like blind and not knowing what I was doing. So I figured, you know, why not practice on these cabinets, kind of get a feel for it, learn what I'm doing, and then go to the shower. But as you'll see here, I started that and it's still kind of messing up a little bit. So of course I have started with the biggest, most obvious wall in the shower. <laughs> and in here, you'll kind of notice all these like scuff and scratch marks and basically just back down to the foam there. That is because I did this before I had proper tools in, so I was still using my yellow squeegee to kind of try and drag things out. And again, I was finding it easier to um, work in stages where I would maybe like let this portion cure, let that portion cure, and then kind of go back and get the middle. So all around the sides were fine for sanding. It cured great. Whatever I did in the center, either I didn't add enough catalyst or there wasn't enough heat on it. I came back to sand it the next day and it was super gummy, which is just horrible. That is one thing that I occasionally run into. So if anybody has tips on how to sand down um, gummy areas in this, I ended up taking the grinder to. So it wasn't so bad, but I've got a few spaces in a cabinet that I just can't logically get the grinder in there and like with the orbital it just seems to smear it so I just make it worse which is very annoying so that is one thing I could use another tip on too is getting rid of gummy compound <laughs> but anyway I've got my proper tools now so I will be going kind of like over this center area again but my next job is I'm going to be working on the inboard hull here so this is an area that Matt had closed up because the chamfer panel goes of course sloping up like we don't need that in the shower um, so I'm going to be taking off all of this peel ply and it's still pretty smooth edges but I'll just be kind of like blending them in and then now that I have like my trowels and my six and eight inch um, kind of like putty knives I should be able to get kind of like a good thing going here a nice light layer and keep adding on to that so um, yeah that's gonna be my next project is to start sanding that down and then fairing that and hope I do a lot better job than I did on this. Not only did the entire surface need to be fared, but all the edges of our tape needed to be blended. This included both sides, the overhead, and the large seam across the middle where we'd added the extra foam. The fairing compound I was using was a polyester base from Total Boat and is mixed with a MEKP catalyst. I had just gotten a new trowel in, which I was super excited to try, but realized after five seconds that this is probably the least flush surface we have. And so that tool quickly disappeared. but my new six inch drywall taping knife was just perfect for the job. I knew it would take me a while to fully get the swing of how to use it, but already it was much better for a space of that size than using my little plastic squeegee. I was also having a good go of bulkhead four leading into the shower area until I remembered that wall was supposed to be left bare because we need to wrap fiberglass around the door opening. Oops. but the layers seem to be going on well throughout the head, even though it would only be the first of many to come. A lot of people have asked why we're building a boat, why we want to do that instead of buying one, and it's stuff like this. This is what entertains me, and the thing that I absolutely love about this project is figuring out solutions to what we're doing. Um, what I have been trying to do is cut our final gap around where these hatches are going to be to make sure that it's, it's perfect in just that initial cut. And so I've been trying to use eighth inch bits, router bits, and um, trim bits basically to cut that out. 
what I've since figured out is instead of that, instead of just going for that final gap right in that first cut, what I should be doing is cutting it with three, uh, three sixteenths or even a quarter inch bit because I can have that depth and do it all in one shot. And then after the fact, fill in around where that hatch goes and take this, this um, uh, template piece and cut back around that and trim it down to the proper final size. Um, so I went a little bit too aggressive with my plan and uh, it is going to end up costing us a little bit more work because I can't get eight inch bits that are that long that will still support in the router and not wobble back and forth. Had I gone with three sixteenths or a quarter inch, I can get that actual cutting depth that I need. But again, that's the fun part of this is learning these processes. And it's sometimes not going to help us now <laughs> in this scenario at all, but it's something for the future. Maybe, maybe we'll never use it again, but just that satisfaction of figuring that out is what I absolutely love about this whole project. So this is as deep as I was able to cut with uh, the router bits that I have available. I couldn't find anything that would cut further than um, one and one eighth inch deep at an eighth, eighth inch bit. Um, besides trying to use a roto zip, which doesn't quite have the stability that I need. I need something that's gonna be able to follow that path a little more. So quite frankly, I think it's just a jigsaw is how I will cut it out again. But I did able to, was able to get it down here little chip here a little chip here but everything else is everything else is actually pretty good it turned out all right 